This is an old Hemi slide rule. It's 50 years old. Comes in a leather case. And it still slides really nicely. It's got a bamboo construction with a celluloid or plastic face. Now, if I can remember how to use this thing, uh, over here on the left we have this marking for the different scales. To do multiplication, for example, we can use the C and the D scale. Um, there's several log scales up here. There's sine and cosine here. More log scales. E to the X. So you can get take, you can set it to X and get E to the X. On this side we have other scales. So we have uh, still a C and a D. We've got a bunch of pi activity here. We've got X squared, X cubed, square root of X. Yeah, there's two different scales there. E to the X again. So how does this work? Well, we have the index of one at the end here and we can move that to whatever number we would like to multiply by. So just for example, if we move it to two, which is on the, the D scale, and we can move the slider to where up whatever we want to multiply by. So if we multi multiply by two on the C scale, we get four. Um, and you can accumulate results, so you don't actually have to read off the four if you want to multiply by something else. You just move the index over to the the first result, and then move the cursor to wherever you want. So by two again gives you eight, etc. So that's multiplication. Um, doing something like x squared is very simple. You just move the slider, the cursor, to wherever you want. So suppose we take 3, and we take 3 squared is 9, and 3 cubed is 27. Uh, so it's, it's quicker than punching in a bunch of numbers just to slide it to wherever you need to go. You know, if you want to to square pi, you just put it on pi and read off 9.8 roughly, but you can, I'm far away because I'm behind the camera here, so it's um, hard to read those numbers, but, but what else can we do? So we can do square root, suppose we want to do square root of 4, and obviously that's going to be 2, but if we wanted to do 40, it, we would read it off here, uh, 6.2. And we don't have to use the middle slider for any of those kinds of calculations. We just use the cursor. Interestingly, I guess the cursor, the name for cursor, is from la the Latin for runner um, or running messenger. But that got used by the computer industry when they just uh, used cursors for pointers on screen but it started out here on slide rules where the little line on the cursor really helps you line up all these scales okay let's see if I can remember anything else about how to use a slide rule um, if you're multiplying two numbers like uh, 42 times 43, here's 42, the 43 would be way off the scale over to the right, so what we would use is the right hand index, and put that at 42, and then we can just read the number off here, times 43, we get 18, Oh, six, and the reason I know that it's the six because 42 times 43, the last two digits will multiply, will give us a six. So you can actually get four digits of precision if you do a little math in your head on the last number. What else do we have here? So there's a 
trigonometry, we can do the sines and cosines are on this slider. Um, cosines are green numbers and the sines are black numbers. And since they slide along with the C scale, which is here, um, when we read off, say we go to 30 degrees, the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5 and the, sine, the cosine of 60 degrees is 0.5. But if we want to do something like multiply 22 times cosine of 70, so we go to 22. And then we just slide this over to uh, 70 degrees on the cosine scale. Right there, and we can read that off as, the we can read the answer directly as 7.52. But... And we didn't need to, to read off that the cosine of 70 is, which is on this scale here, 3 point, or 0.342-ish. But the slide rule can do this multiplication without actually looking at the intermediate value. So you can read the answer simply by putting the cursor on 70 degrees and, and you get the result. You don't need to know what the actual cosine is. So that's pretty slick. You can actually use the, um, the slide rule as an accumulator as you're doing sequential uh, calculations. It's very slick. And I think that's where I'm going to leave it. I don't want to bore you with a lot of tricks that I don't really remember how to do. <laughs> But it's interesting to dig it out and actually see what I can remember about it. So while we're on this trip down memory lane, I have my old calculator from the mid-70s vintage, like 45 years old, maybe a little bit older. Um, it's a Texas Instruments SR51A scientific calculator. I've used this thing for about, I don't know, 15 or 20 years, at least until Windows got a scientific calculator built, built into it, which would have been the mid 90s. Um, so that's one of my favorite devices of all time. Sort of, certainly saw a lot of use. It still works fine. I did put a power jack on the back. That's a modification because this thing is an LED calculator and it uses some power. So right now with one digit showing, it's using 116 milliamps, which is half a watt, 0.6 watts. If I light up all the LEDs, it's 216 milliamps and that's over one watt. So it was using up a lot of batteries and I got tired of that, so I put in a power jack. But it still works great. Um, and I'm going to keep it around just for the fact that I like it so much. But it's another trip down memory lane to uh, bring it out and fool around with it again. <laughs>